Hey everybody, welcome, it's Caleb, and this is your mini series on getting started with Linux. Linux is one of the most useful things to learn, and it's one of those things that you might be able to survive a little bit without knowing Linux if you just copy commands here and there. But the more you study software development and computers, the more you realize doing a systematic study of Linux and the different tools of Linux, the better off you're gonna be. I currently run two Linux systems at my house, and also some web servers that run Linux as well. Also, I choose to develop on Mac, which is a Unix operating system. So this video, the purpose of it is going to be to get started with a Linux environment, somewhere where you can type different commands. So if you're on Mac, you're lucky, you don't really have to do a whole lot. So you just open up the terminal, and you know yours probably isn't gonna look as freaking cool as mine, but Make that full screen and there you go. You are ready to type commands. You can say something like PWD and that will give you your path. Now this is gonna be slightly different on Mac than it's going to be on a Linux distribution such as Ubuntu. But a lot of the commands are going to be exactly the same. But we need to talk about you Windows people because I know a lot of you watching this use Windows. In fact, it's one of my most common things. So hey, why don't you make these videos on Windows? You're using Mac, I don't have a Mac, I don't know how to follow along. Well now, I'm gonna teach you how to follow along because on Windows, there are tools that will basically emulate a terminal coming from Linux. So if you're on Windows, check out MinGW. So MinGW is going to give you a Linux-like terminal on Windows. This tool is actually included with Git, so I usually get it that way. So get SCM, you can download it for Mac or well, probably Windows, right? Because that's what we're talking about. When you download it for Windows, you go through that installation. It'll give you the option if you want to include that. And then you should be able to type Linux commands on Windows. So what if you're following along with this video and this tool isn't exactly what you want or it's a little bit different than what I'm doing? Well, then I have a solution that's going to be consistent across every operating system. And that is to actually use a virtual server. So you can do that locally. If you are interested in figuring out how to do that, you can figure that out. But I'm gonna show you how to do it online. I'm gonna be doing this with Hostinger, which is the sponsor of this mini series. So thank you Hostinger for supporting this channel and giving me a virtual private server to play around with. So Hostinger, you can use it for shared hosting if you have a website you wanna host, or if you wanna take things a little bit more seriously and get a virtual private server or a dedicated server, you can do that with Hostinger. So under hosting, you can go to virtual private server and you can start now with a 30 day money back guarantee. And it's fairly affordable. You can get cheap VPS for 395 only. So scrolling down to VPS one, that's pretty cheap, $4 a month. And you can get a Linux environment that you can follow along with this video and all other Linux videos out there. So as you go through this setup process, we're going to fill out this information and then you have an option to choose your operating system. And these are all Linux or Unix variations. If you have a preference, you can choose one. I have always used Ubuntu. That was the first one that I was ever introduced to. And it's the one I've become most familiar with. It's probably the most popular as well. So let's go ahead with Ubuntu 20 and then we will just hit set up. All right, it's that easy. Continue to the control panel. Now from this point, we want to connect to the server through SSH. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take SSH root at this IP address and we're going to paste this in the terminal. So if you're on Windows, you can use the command prompt. So hit enter. Are you sure you want to continue connecting? Yes. And then type in the password you just set. I typed in my password and it's stalling here. We might need to wait for this to be complete. All right, I'm just gonna quit out of this and try again. So we're going to connect to this through SSH. Paste that here. And now it is connected. And now at this point, you should be able to say something like PWD and get something you should get forward slash root. All right, and there you go. You now have Linux set up and you should be able to go in here and follow all of the Linux commands and tutorials. This is your practicing environment. And the ideal part about this is it's not on your local computer. So if you screw something up, eh, you don't really lose anything. You can just start over. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're doing it on your local machine, try not to delete everything and change all the permissions and screw everything up. Now there's one more way you might want to install Linux and that is as your primary operating system for your computer. This is something you would want to do if you have a computer and you need an operating system for it. 
pretty much if you're not on Mac, you can choose a form of Linux or Windows. And if you hate Windows, then you should go with Linux. So if you want to do this, you need to download an image file of whatever Linux operating system you're working with. Now, we haven't really talked a whole lot about all the different versions of Linux, but again, Ubuntu is a good start, and all the other ones are going to be fairly similar. So if you go to ubuntu.com, go away. See, those are annoying because it's like now everyone has to say they're sharing cookies to track everything you do, and but you have to go to like the hidden settings to turn them off. Anyways, go to downloads and then the Ubuntu desktop or Ubuntu server. Not too different, but this is ideal if you are doing some kind of file server or system that needs to be running all the time. So let's go with a Ubuntu desktop and then download. And then all this donating stuff is optional, so you can just ignore that and it's going to start downloading. And the version for Ubuntu is going to be something like 20 point something. And the even numbers are their official supported launches. You may also see like Ubuntu 19. And this is usually an operating system that software providers and support is going to skip. So you should download an even number for Ubuntu. Now to install this, you can go to this download drop down or just search on the interwebs. And basically what you need to do is you need to burn this to a USB stick or a CD drive. I'd recommend USB just because that's more available. And then create a bootable USB stick on, for example, my case would be Mac OS. And here is the guide on how to do that. So I used this tool Etcher, very easy to use. And basically that's going to take this ISO file, which is just a file that is the operating system that you can boot from. So you plug that USB stick into your computer and then you choose from the boot menu on startup to go from that USB stick. And from there, Ubuntu is going to pop up and you can choose